Dear viewers, welcome to the series of videos on Minitab tutorials. In this video, we are going to understand about the different types of outlier tests that we can do on a given data. So in one of my previous videos, I have clearly explained the conceptual understanding of what is an outlier and what are the different tests available to calculate whether a given data have outlier or not. So now we will see how the same conceptual understanding can be applied in the Minitab. So here I have a set of data and I want to see whether this data contains outlier or not. So what I can do, I can click on stats. I can go to basic stats and here I have something called outlier test. So when I select this outlier test, I can select my given data. And after selecting my given data, I can go to options. And in options, there are two types of tests available. One we call it as Grubbs test, another one is Dixon's test. So Grubbs test is the first one that we are going to see and then we will come to Dixon's test and in Dixon's test what kind of a ratio need to be selected I will be explaining all of that in this video. Let's get into the video. As I told, we are going to identify whether the given data have outlier or not using some of the test which is available. So I click on stats, I go to basic stats and here I have an outlier test. So stats, basic stats and outlier test. So here what I do, I can select my data. Then I can go to options. I select Grubbs test and then I can say my level of significance is 0 0.05 and Minitab gives me an option to check this test for both outliers on the both sides. That means I can have an outlier on the higher side as well as on the lower side, smallest or largest. The test also gives me an op opportunity to test the presence of outlier on only one side, smallest side or on the largest side. But here I am going to select on both sides and then I click OK. Now I can go to graph and in graph I have an outlier plot. That is the only option that I have. Right Now I can come here and I say results. So results, method, test and outlier and I can also say storage and in storage what I can say outlier indicator variables can be stored. I can say OK. Now I click OK. So what happens is, so if you see this indicator, if at all it is an outlier, it will be indicated with a 1 and if it is not an outlier, it will be indicated with a 0. So that is the first thing which is outlier indicator. Now we will see what is the calculation all about? So in grub test, what will happen is I will share the link of the video where I have clearly given the formula for what is called uh, the G calculated value and what is called the G table value. So G calculated value and G table value are nothing but you have to calculate the G value using a formula. And the formula also I have clearly explained in the video. I will give you the uh, link of that video. So your G calculated value and G table value will be compared. And if your G calculated value is bigger than your G table value, then that particular data point will be declared as an outlier. And if you see here, the number of data points you have taken is 30. It's mean, it's standard deviation, minimum, maximum. And what you see here, 3.25, this 3.25 is nothing but the 95% confidence level G table value for you to decide whether the given data is an outlier or not. And then for each value, for each individual value, the G calculated value can be calculated. And then that calculated value can be compared against the G table value. And what Minitab has identified is except for this data point, all the other data points G calculated value is less than the G table value of 3.25. That's why this data point is represented as an outlier and all the other data points are represented not as an outlier with a blue color dot. So this is how the Grubbs test work. Now for the same data, what we will do is we will perform the other test, which is Dixon test. So now I'm going to click on stats. I'm going to click on basic stats. And in basic stats, I have outlier test. And in this outlier test, I'm going to select the same data. I go to options. This time, I'm not going to select this. Instead, I'm going to select the Dixon's ratio. 
Now in this Dixon's ratio test, what I can do, I can select these options. That is R11, R12, R20, 21, 22. Now what does this mean? So if you want to understand what does it mean, we have a small uh, reference material from the mini tab. So let me open it. So when do we select R10, R11, R21, R22? All the selection criteria are your Dixon's ratio, Q ratio, right? So these are selected depending upon sample size, how many data points you have. So if you have more than 14, it is better to go for the R22. So here definitely we have 30 data points. Hence, we are going to go for R22. So if we select any of this, basically what we are doing is we are doing a Dixon test only, but R22 is what we need to select. And again, you you can do this test for smallest value or bigger, largest value. How does the Dixon test work? What is the formula? It is a formula where you will be comparing the difference between the maximum value and minimum uh, difference between the maximum value and its nearest value, which is called gap. And then you will find the ratio of that gap with the range. So that is what we will do. So again, for this, there is a detailed video that I have posted. I will, I will share the link of that video. So now we select this option. We hit OK. We can go to graph. Again, we can have the outlayer graph. We can go to storage and we can say OK. And we can go to results. Yes, these options are checked. Now I can click. And now if you see again using this test also number three is identified as an outlier and how do we interpret the results 30 data points minimum value is three and from there it has identified the nearest values and based on that it has calculated the nearest value for three the very nearest value for three is 4.76 so from there it has calculated the values and it has come up with the dixon's ratio and that ratio again will be compared against the table value and as you compare it against the table value you can decide a given data is outlier or not so here number three is definitely as an outlier so these are the two methods that we can do the one more method that we can do for a data is here i will go back to the excel where i have kept this data so the data is here Now for this given data, the average is at 5.93 and the standard deviation is 0.90, that is the standard deviation. So if you want to have a graphical representation of the Z score method, which is the third method, what we can do is we can say average plus two times of standard deviation and average minus two times of standard deviation. So 7.73, 4.12, these are the values. Now what we can do is just to have a graphical representation, I can click on graph, I can click on individual value plot, sorry, I can click on graph, I can click on individual value plot, here I can select this and I can say OK, I can select my data and I can say data view, my mean symbol is checked. And now I can come to scale and I can say reference line and in reference line show reference lines at the Y value. So show reference line at the Y value here I am going to select the two computed values 7.73 and 4.12. So I can say 7.73 space 4.12 and now I can say OK. Again I can say OK. I get an individual value plot. If I am using a logic of two standard deviation rule, then I have a data point here, which is an outlier and a data point here, which is an outlier. So this is the graphical understanding of two standard deviation rule, right? Based on the Z score. If I want to go for three standard deviation, then what I can do is 
I can take the same value here and then I can say plus I can say three times of standard deviation right and similarly I can say average minus three times of standard deviation right and the computed values are 8.63 and 3.22 so what I can do is I can again draw the individual value plot I can go to the reference line and I can say no I don't want the lines at these values instead I want the lines at 8.63 and 3.22 so I say 8.63 space 3.22 and now I can say ok and again I can say ok it gives me the individual value plot and now you can see very clearly that if I use the three standard deviation rule then 8 is not declared as an outlier still 3 is declared as an outlier so this is the other rule which is using the z score and the fourth rule is for data which is not normally distributed and that's where we will use the box plot so I can go for graph and I can go for box plot and I can select box plot for individual simple y and I can say ok and now I can select this data and I can say ok and you will find that 3 is getting represented as a star and when 3 get represented as a star what is the meaning this 3 is falling beyond 1.5 times of IQR from P25 or from P75 so that is the meaning again for this I have clearly explained it using the formula in a separate video I will share the link but what you need to understand here is in a box plot if you find a star that means that particular data point is falling beyond 1.5 times of interquartile range and interquartile range is the difference between P75 and P25 so the difference between P75 and P25 is your interquartile range and that interquartile range multiplied by 1.5 is 1.5 times of interquartile range so p25 minus 1.5 times of interquartile range p75 plus 1.5 times of interquartile range if the data falls beyond or below this then it will be called as an outlier so friends in minitab as i told there are four methods two methods are very much statistical in nature which is your grubs test and your uh, Dixon's test which we do as outlier test and from a graphical representation we can use box plot to understand about outliers if your data is not normally distributed and if you want to understand it using the z score values of two standard deviation rule or three standard deviation rule you can do an individual value plot and there you can add your standard deviation lines and based on that you can declare whether a given data is outlier or not friends I hope this video was useful for you to determine whether the data has outlier or not for more videos on minitab tools and techniques quality management related tools please subscribe to our channel thanks for your time see you in another video